Welcome to the Preside 1020 release notes video. Hot off the hills of 1019, we have a super pocket release really. We have four tickets in here. Uh, the first one is System Alerts, which is our headline feature for the release. We have some new date range expressions for rules engine filters on date fields. Uh, we've got a nice little enhancement for top right buttons that allows um, a main button with a drop down with kind of easy easy to do code for that and finally a, a little de um, developer edition that allows you to do database migrations and disable the data migration if there's a, a feature or something like that that is disabled so diving right in the first one is system alerts so the idea here is that developers can alert users of the system to situations where um, either data in the database or other combinations of things are not correct, not working as you'd expect them to be, and that's kind of a critical problem with the system, or a warning system, but warning alert, sorry. So I've logged in here, I've just span up this site from scratch, uh, and straight away I get a critical alert, system alert here. It says email settings, uh, view alert detail. So this toast here is going to turn up, if there are any critical alerts in the system, this toast is going to show up once uh, during a user's session. So I close this, go somewhere else. I'm not going to see that anymore. So it doesn't continue to bug me. So I'll get it, get it bugging me once per login. Um, but up here we've got a new, if there are any alerts, we get this new menu item here that wiggles at me. So I click on that and we can see all of the system alerts that are in the system. So we can see here we've got an email center settings alert. Um, it's a global context, so this is a, a global alert. Developers are able to um, create kind of context-specific alerts. So let's say you have an event system and an event record has a whole load of setup and, and it's not quite right and you need to raise a critical alert about that, um, you can do so. Anyway, let's take a look at that alert. If we click on that, we can see the detail. So developers can provide a renderer here to, to show users what that, what what the alert is and what they can do to resolve it. In this case, it's saying, please visit the email centers page to resolve the issue. Um, and the issue is I don't have a default prom address is what it said. So I'm just going to put test at example.com. And I hit save. Um, and now you can see that the alert has disappeared. Um, so in fact, that just by saving this, the alert has gone away. So developers can hook into various points um, in the system to to check on, uh, to kind of rerun their health checks. So it, developers provide a handler with logic to kind of check to see whether there are any problems or not. And they can also then within that specify when they want that check to run. So in this case, this check is set to run when the email general settings form is saved. Um, other hooks include on startup and you can also uh, provide a cron tab expression to, to run these on a schedule so like every every two hours for example run a health check so i can actually trigger this again if i remove that it's treated as a brand new alert in this case uh, because it's happened again and so i do get the notice and i can view the alert detail um, you are able to rerun a check in here um, and it will say it's still found to be failing uh, if it passes if it passes, it's likely the alert will have gone away, um, but there could be an instance where you might want to rerun that. So that's it. So out of the box, we've just got uh, the email center, center settings alert, um, and that's it. So kind of next versions of your software, where you want to make use of this, you can then kind of fill more kind of really useful health checks for the workings of your system. So yeah, that's system alerts. Next one, we have uh, date range, some new date range expressions. So I'll use system alerts as an example. So whenever you filter on a date based field, for example, date raised, and you can get this at any point in time picker here, you get a time span. So we have lots of options here um, to choose from. And we have three new ones. We have exactly on date, exactly x days ago and exactly x days in the future they do what they you'd expect them to do so exactly on date allows you to pick a date so let's pick today and we should get that one if we pick tomorrow we shouldn't get any and if we pick yesterday we shouldn't get any yes um 
and also exactly let's say x days ago so this is then slightly different from recently or upcoming uh, exactly x days ago and let's type exactly again exactly x days in the future so we could say uh, in two days time which is never going to be the case for this but yes um yeah that's those three new date range expressions so thirdly we have a new ux pattern that developers are able to do uh, to use for top right buttons in their data manager screens so they can create something look look something like this where you've got um, a success button here for example when if you if you were to click on that it would perform some action but it also has a drop down with further actions that you can click on to to provide links for admin users um, you also can make use of a spacer bar like this uh, so in code the documentation has been updated so the reference with the data manager top right buttons um, has been updated so we've got examples here so we have a button with a primary action and children that's from 1020 onwards so in this case we have the, uh, the regular button just on its own would be these three so it has a title a link and an icon class um, but in this case it also has children and these are the same uh, children array as before that are documented so these are the child actions and here if you if one of your child actions is uh, just a string it will render it as it is unless it's three dashes and it will render it like a spacer so what's interesting to note is before you could do either or you could either you could have a button that was didn't have a link but did have children or a button that did have a link and didn't have children never both so that's the change there so yeah that gives you this pattern to work with in your custom data manager screens for developers and finally a little extra bonus for developers um, since 1018 we've had uh, database migrations that you can supply in your extensions and for your app and all they were was uh, a run or a run async method that allowed you to to run some database some data logic that would run only once and once it's run it's kind of saved in the database it says it doesn't need to run that again now as of 1020 you can in that migration handler you can put is in a you can create an is enabled handler function sorry um, and that can return some dynamic check to see uh, whether or not it's enabled so this prevents it from being run if you if, if it's kind of feature based if, you, if you're doing this in an extension and, and it should only run if there's a feature enabled um, you want to do this to prevent it from running before the feature is enabled and then if somebody then later enables the feature this database migration isn't going to run because it had already run but this will prevent that so that's it preside 1020 nice tiny little release um, no upgrade concerns you can upgrade from 1019 um, well, and, and the previous ones in fact there have uh, not really been any upgrade concerns of such since 1016 so great hope you enjoy have a merry christmas